Good morning to the Dogecoin community. Welcome to another Daily Dose of Doge Shadow Realm edition. You can see the Shadow Realm has fully engulfed us once again. Just when people started getting excited, the Shadow Realm came around and said, no, no, not yet. And we get a nice little wick, so I would imagine probably going to cool off for at least a couple of days. And still stuck in the Shadow Realm. Still a little bit to talk about. Same primary concepts that we've been mentioning this entire time. One beautiful thing that I just noticed just now is Ethereum actually broke over the downtrend of the RSI. This is actually a big sign. Believe it or not, the RSI for Ethereum has actually been bearish since March. Okay, we're now in November and it's finally over the trend line or whatever you want to call this, the moving average. Now, make no mistake, if we fall back below the moving average, then just forget everything, okay? But if we could stay over the moving average like we have been for the past month, then we would actually begin an uptrend. Now, again, this is where it gets controversial because you will now have people saying, oh, we still have more than enough time to go up if the top is going to be at the end of next year which that is the primary consensus, but I would imagine there are more and more people still saying that the top is early. I do think still the top is early. And believe it or not, the RSI is something that we have mentioned many times before where you can clearly see it's just, it's dreadful. It's, it's dead, right? And you can see that the RSI is, or excuse me, the moving average is clearly nosediving, right? as it has the past two times now there's not well, i don't want to say there's not enough sample size but um obviously this is ethereum wasn't out back here so we don't know you'll always have the group that say no this is where we are and listen at the end of the day maybe we are right i'm not going to sit here pushing a narrative because there's no data here so maybe that is where we are but i am personally betting that we're over the hill as far as momentum and i do think when we do get this final push up, it will create the bearish divergence that we've created in 2021 and in 2017, right? So uh, why is that relevant? Well, the reason I always bring this up, and again, maybe you're new to the channel, but the reason I always bring this up is because Dogecoin tops out when the momentum tops out, all right? Or the, the hype, I guess, the hype and the hopium, as the doctor of dump and pump would say. The hype and the hopium, that's when Dogecoin tops out. So if we're expecting that the hopium and the hype could actually top out in the early part of the year, that's the best guess, in my opinion, as to when Dogecoin is going to top out. And this is a Dogecoin video, so I would imagine that is kind of relevant. And yesterday we made a really good point that I didn't actually realize until yesterday. But if you actually look at it, Again, last market cycle, Dogecoin was 16 cents on April 10th. These are, rough, these are rough estimates. And by May 11th, or actually May 7th, it rallied by 355%. So it took 21 days. We'll just say 30 days, actually. It took 30 days to go from 16 to 75. Now, let's just speculate, right? Let's just say Dogecoin doesn't do anything until February. February, we would be able to go from 16 to 75. Now, that would be uh, very unfortunate if that ended up being the case, but I'm just showing you how little time it takes for Dogecoin to actually move up. So if we started moving up in January, then you would have an extra 60 days. You'd have all of January, all of February, and all of March to move from 16 to 21 uh sorry to 75 cents now i would imagine as we've been looking at for the past couple of videos regardless of where you think the top is the bitcoin dominance has historically begun falling 230 days post having now you got to give it some room because it's obviously not going to be the exact same every time but generally you can see 231 rug pull 234 rug pull and 234 
this time around would put us in the middle of December. So unfortunately, that does mean, especially because October was bearish, uh, or at least not Moonboy bullish, that does open the door for a dud of November. Right now, I'm not going to make that prediction. I'm not going to make a bogus prediction again. But I wouldn't get my hopes too high for November, especially with this giant wick forming now, just because it suggests that, or, or excuse me, let me uh, backtrack. As far as alt season goes, I wouldn't get my hopes up for November, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So I, I, I wouldn't, I, I would be shocked if Dogecoin broke 22 cents in November. If it ends up happening, great. But realistically, as I had drawn for the past couple of weeks, we had the path of resistance was probably going to be 22 cents by December. And then in January through March, we get the bull run. Uh, I think we're seeing that potentially come in now with the sellers, but uh, that doesn't mean November has to be bearish. I just wouldn't expect Doge to break 23 cents, 22 cents in November. Now, again, why do I say that? Because tying it to the original point from before, it doesn't take that much time to go up. So you can see in January last year or last cycle, December 30th, we broke the red line and then we were bullish from December until May. I don't think we're going to be bullish until May this time. I think it's going to be shorter. But again, even if you go from January to March, you did a 16x. Okay. So, yes, we're obviously much higher. So, we can't expect the same market move. But again, even if you did a 10x from today, that's a that's dollar $1.80. So I'm just trying to highlight the point here that it doesn't take that much time for Dogecoin to move, even in 2017, because we don't want to neglect both of the market cycles or just one of them. In this area here, you broke the red line and you shot up by 600% from, uh, what is that? From April to June, you shot up eight, whatever I just said, right? You shot up 600%. So you don't need a lot of time. And even in 2017, at the end, you went from 0.06, you did a 30x in three months. This is another beautiful example. You did a 30x in three months. So again, I would make the case that as long as we're below the red line, which is 21 cents, there's no bull run, right? It doesn't, and even in March, I even in March, I was very hopium, definitely very hopium filled. But I also mentioned like, dude, if we can't get through this red line, it's not happening. Obviously, I didn't make the prediction that we were going to go down here. I said we would never go below there, but we did. Right. So now you'll say, oh, we're going through 22 cents because he said it's not happening. I <laughs> Listen, I hope you're right. But it, it appears that we're still dreadful in the shadow realm. But I would imagine that whenever we break 22 cents, if it's in November or December, that gives us the green light. And the more time that we have, the more high the price target, I think, for Dogecoin that we can make. Because as I just told you, in 2017, it took us three months to do a 30x. In 2020, it took us three months to do uh, 17. Yeah, I guess you could say that 17x. So could it be that bizarre? that we take into consideration the market cap has grown, that we're going to get a, a 10x in three months from December to March. Maybe it's even a 6x, right? If we break from 22 to $1.50, 6x isn't that crazy at all, okay? So we'll leave it at that. But again, I would, st I am still not backing down by any stretch of the imagination that the top is going to be in the spring but i would imagine just like i said yesterday or the day before that with the toyota theory where if dogecoin does break out then that does suggest that two dollars would be in play the opposite is also true where if we're not able to break through then or excuse me if we're not able to break through early then we may be looking at 95 to 120. And I just want to reiterate one final point that we mentioned briefly, right? 
we made the case that if you actually look back at 2020, that the November dump before the election was actually a real thing. Well, actually, this this uh this was after the election, but the November dump around the election was actually something that happened in 2020, where you made a higher low, a lower high, you dumped, and then you had to bull run, right? Now I'm not sitting here saying that has to happen again, but unironically, we're seeing the same thing where we rallied up into November, we're having a sell off, and again, regardless of who wins the election, I think it's irrelevant. Because you can clearly see here that in 2020, the election played out and we had a big rally. So I don't think the election matters personally. Uh, I would imagine that this is the most likely outcome where we kind of chop around. But I do think we grind higher overall. And then in, in December, we bust through this 21 cents. And then from January to March, we go to $1.50, $1.20, $2, wherever it ends up being, right? But the primary structure is still holding, and that's the biggest key here, right? Every time we come down here, people get bearish, and they say, oh, Ethereum is going to crash, and then in uh, three days later, it goes back up. So uh, I am not sitting here being bearish by any stretch. I, I, I think the top is in March. I think we got to start moving. Um, but what else was I going to say? Yeah. So if we, if we really do see a pullback for Doge, then we're right on schedule again. And unfortunately the $2 becomes less likely, but if we can still see Doge continue moving higher into the end of the month or even break 21, 22 in November, then that would even push, uh, a higher price for Doge at the end. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, but that's pretty much it. None of this is financial advice.